Sleep, we all know we need it, but most of us aren't getting enough of it or doing it well. And here to help us improve our shut eye is sleep expert Dr. Javez Hayek with Conway Medical Center. And I'm sure you've heard the phrase, I'll sleep when I'm dead. But how important is sleep really? And how much do we really need? Yeah, first, thank you, Erica, for having me. And it's my pleasure to be here. Uh, we all know sleep is very important. Uh, uh, part of our life, you know, we all spend almost a third of our life sleeping. So it's a it's a normal and uh, universal process for all of us and for the majority of species as well. You know, it's important to let our body and brain rest. Okay, so then if we're looking at how much we're sleeping, I know that there are a lot of sleep trackers and apps, devices, I mean, as far as just commonly used ones, how accurate are they? Are they giving us good information is my apple watch telling me exactly you know um, how much i'm sleeping you know i always believe that uh, more information is better and it's always good to have more information but we have to keep in mind you know these devices are not uh, medically approved or medically graded devices so we cannot base any formal or clinical diagnosis from the data we get from these devices so if, if you have any concerns or if you have any symptoms before getting very anxious of what this device is telling you it's better to talk to your uh, uh, physician or healthcare provider and uh, they can, you know, do a, a, you know, history and physical exam and recommend if any other testing is required to diagnose uh, any problem you're dealing with. So if we don't get enough sleep time or if we don't get enough uh, or good quality sleep, you know, it's going to affect us. It's going to cause mainly, uh, uh, of course, physical uh, illnesses, but also mental illnesses, you know. It can affect our memory, concentration, uh, feeling tired, sleepy, mm -hmm. sleep in, at work, sleep while driving, you know, increase our risk of having work accidents, car accidents, poor school or work performance, right? Also, it can increase the risk of having other health issues, cardiovascular disease, high blood pressure, heart problems, diabetes, even early deaths or, or increase all-cause mortality. Uh, we have to follow some sleep hygiene to have better sleep, you know, uh, including, you know, sleep only as much as your body needs. So, and when you're awake, get out of bed. Don't spend time in bed or your bedroom if you're not sleeping. Um, uh, try to have a, a regular schedule for uh, sleep. Like you go to bed and you wake up around the same time every day, even during uh, weekends and holidays so, mm. or vacation. So, you know, because if you go to bed every different time every day or during the weekdays and weekends, it means like you're traveling almost every week and you're, you're exposing yourself to like jet lag and that's not healthy. A lot of people I think will turn to sleep aids or, or just anything, anything over the counter or something because they think this is going to help me. Is, is that something that's useful for the average person? You know, uh, uh, as a sleep specialist and uh, medical societies, we try to stay away from any sleeping aids as much as we can, you know. Even over the counter medications, you should discuss this with your you know, primary uh, physician or healthcare provider before taking any of these, you know. Uh, if we are dealing with insomnia, you know, I, I think you need, this needs to be evaluated in the medical settings uh, where your provider can, you know, take history, perform exam. First, see if we're dealing really with insomnia or not. Second, see uh, if, uh, set up some uh, uh, expectations about sleep and what's normal sleep and uh, again, to prevent more anxiety, and, and also to, uh, to see if there is any medical reason why you cannot sleep. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes is it because uh, we have any uh, physical problem, like pain or, or, or mental illness, like depression, psychiatric illnesses that can prevent you from sleeping. So these needs to be addressed before, before we call this a, an idiopathic or mm -hmm. primary insomnia. Okay, then, so you're saying stay away from those in general because it's probably correct, correct. not going to do any right. good in the long term. Especially. especially in the long term, right. We should not use any sleeping aids for long term. Dr. Havez Hayek, with the importance of sleep in some ways, we can improve on it. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you again. Thank you.